Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the basic theory of uh, Lie algebras. We will now define the direct product. So, let us begin with uh, two Lie algebras G1 and G2. So, let uh, G1 and G2 be two given Lie algebras. So, then take their Cartesian product G1 cross G2. So, this is set of all tuples x comma y where x comes from g1 and y comes from g2. So, now using the Lie brackets on g1 and g2, we define Lie bracket on g1 cross g2 as follows. The bracket x1 y1 comma x2 y2 is defined to be the bracket x1 x2 in the first coordinate comma the bracket y1 y2 in the second coordinate and this is true for all x1 x2 comes from g1 and y1 y2 comes from g2 and it is easy to check uh, this defines indeed Lie algebra structure on g1 cross g2. So, moreover uh, we have the following informations. So, if we take the center of g1 cross g2 then it is easy to see that it will be the product of the individual centers. And similarly, if we take the derivative algebra, the derivative algebra of g1 cross g2. So, this will be a product of the respective derivative algebras. The, you take the derivative algebra of g1 and then the derivative algebra of g2, take the product that will be the derivative algebra of g1 cross g2. And also, if we take g1 cross 0 and 0 cross g2. So, both of them will be ideals inside g1 cross g2. And it is easy to see if it go modulo g1 cross g2 modulo this first ideal g1 cross 0. So, that will be isomorphic to g2 and if you go modulo 0 cross g2 then that will be isomorphic to g1. So, all these things can be easily proved. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, this is actually called external direct product. So, we can also define what is called internal direct sum. Okay. So, the direct sum is defined as follows. So, the direct sum of uh, subalgebras. Okay. So, G is said to be direct sum of G1 and G2, both of them are subalgebra of G. So, if it satisfies the following condition. So, you start with G which is a Lie algebra and then let us say G1, G2 both of them are subalgebra of G. Then we say G is a direct sum of G1 and G2 if the following satisfied. So, if we take G, then that should be equal to G1 plus G2. So, that is the first condition. The second condition G1, G2 both of them must be ideals inside G. The third condition whenever you write x plus y equal to 0 for some x in G1 and y in G2, then we must have x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. So, this means given any element of G that should be written as uniquely as sum of element from G1 and element from G2. Okay. So, there are various equivalents, equivalent version of uh, direct sums. Okay. So, one can take this as definition, no issue. So, now uh, there is a close relationship between direct product and direct sum as long as you consider finite direct products and finite direct sum. And once we have the definition of direct product of two Lie algebras, it is easy to extend that to any finite direct products. Similarly, it is easy to extend any finite direct sum. Okay. So, now I will leave it as exercise that uh, if you have direct product of two Lie algebras, then it will be naturally isomorphic to direct product of two, 
to uh, Lie subalgebras. Okay, let us start with G Lie algebra. and g1 g2 both of them are subalgebra of g okay so then one can define natural map from g1 cross to g2 to g if it is a direct sum of g12 so let's say g1 g2 choose and subalgebra such that g equal to g1 direct sum g2 so then you can easily see that this map x comma y goes to x plus y defines an isomorphism between g1 cross g2 to g. So, this is something easy to verify, I will leave it to you to verify. So, now we will actually get back to GLN and SLN and understand its, uh, its uh, structure. Okay. So, let us recall some of the things. So, what is GLN? So, GLN is the set of all n by n matrices, the set of all n by n matrices. So, in particularly, we have this standard basis Eij, where Ij is not equal to n. So, this is the standard basis of GLN. In particularly, the dimension of GLN is n square. Similarly, we have SLN, which is traceless matrices inside GLN. So, now we have the this natural basis. So, you take E i j i not equal to j which comes from 1 to n and the disjoint union the h i's where i range from 1 to n minutes where h i defined to be the diagonal matrices E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. So, basically it looks like pictorially 1 at the ith place and minus 1 at i plus 1th place all remaining entries are 0, okay, that is H i and it is easy to verify this is the basis of SLM. So, now uh, using this we will determine the structure of uh, GLN and SLN. It is easy to see that GLN is direct sum of SLN and this one dimensional subspace which is indeed ideal inside GLN which is spanned by the identity matrix i n. So, i n is the n by n identity matrix. So, in terms of basis, this is nothing but the summation E i i, where i range from 1 to n. So, now one can easily check this G L n is direct sum of these two subalgebras. Okay because this i n is indeed sits inside the center of G L n. So, we can prove it is indeed equal to the center. Okay. So, here is the claim the center of G L n is exactly one dimensional space spanned by the identity and if we take the derived algebra of G L n. So, that is going to be exactly equal to SLN and moreover one can also determine all the ideals of GLN. The ideals of GLN are the trivial spaces 0 and GLN and on top of it you have the center and the derived algebra and that is all nothing else because SLN has uh, co dimension 1 there. So, there is no other subspace proper subspace that contains SLN inside GLN and there is no proper subspace of center as well because the center is one dimensional and these are all the only ideals of GLN. Okay. Now, using this one can actually verify that SLN must be simply algebra. In particularly, the center of SLN 
must be trivial and the derived algebra of SLN must be itself and moreover the only ideals of SLN are 0 and ideals of SLN are 0 and SLN. So, that means SLN is simple Lie algebra. So, this is the only simple Lie algebra that we will be encountering in this course. So, we will be mostly focusing on GLN and SLN in this course, no more other Lie algebras. Okay. So, let us prove one by one. So, we will actually uh, begin with uh, understanding the center. So, let us start with proving the center of GLN is the identity. Okay. So, it is clear that identity lies in the center. So, now you start with x being in the center of GLN, then it is immediate that the bracket x y is 0 for all y in GLN. That means, x and y commutes for all y in GLN. Okay. So, since we are working over complex numbers, we can make use of the eigenvalues and eigenspaces. So, let us say that uh, we want to prove x is nothing but uh, some lambda times identity. That means, it has exactly one eigenspace with eigenvalue lambda. Okay. So, let lambda be a be an eigenvalue of x which exists because we are working over complex numbers with the eigenspace. So, eigenspace by definition must be non-zero eigenspace which we denoted by v lambda. So, this v lambda must be non-zero. Let us say we have at least one vector v which is non-zero vector inside v lambda. Now, since x commutes with any operator y, okay, if we take this eigenspace v lambda, it is clear that this eigenspace v lambda must be invariant under y as well. Okay. For any y inside GLN, it is clear that y of v lambda must be subspace of v lambda. So, that is because if I take x w which is lambda w okay, for some w in v lambda, then it is clear that x y w will be y x w which is exactly equal to lambda y w. So, this simple calculation tells you that y w must be again inside v lambda and this is true for all operators y. Now, given this vector v and given uh, any other vector, okay, choose any vector w inside C n. So, then we can have a, an operator again y inside G L n such that y maps v to w. Okay. So, let us say fix, fix this vector, then choose y inside G L n such that y of v is w. So, now y of v lambda is subspace of v lambda that would imply immediately y of v which is w is inside v lambda. So, that you will imply that entire C n. So, because this is a n dimensional, it is acting on n dimensional space. So, this entire C n must be subspace of v lambda. So, that will force that v lambda equal to C n. So, that means x is acting as lambda on entire space C n. So, that means x is exactly lambda times identity. So, that is what we wanted to prove. So, any element inside the center of GLN must be scalar multiple of identity. So, now we will check that the derived algebra must be SLN. So, if we take GLN, GLN the derived algebra, so that must be SLN. So, one way is obvious because for any x and y inside GLN, 
the trace of the bracket x y must be exactly equal to trace of x y minus y x which is exactly equal to 0 because trace of a b is same as trace of b a. So, that implies that uh, if I take this uh, derivative algebra of g l n that must be contained in s l n there is no other option. Now, we will show that any element of s l n must be contained in in the derivative algebra. Okay. So, for that what we will do we will verify that all basis elements of s l n must lie inside the derivative algebra. So, let us start with E i j and i not equal to j. So, this is one of one of the basis then it is easy to see that. So, this must be exactly the bracket of this E i i comma E j j. So, which is nothing but the product E i i E j j minus E j j E i i. So, now you can easily see that So, so this bracket sorry. So, we want to prove that uh, S L n is actually contained in. So, what is the claim? The claim is S L n is contained in the derivative algebra. So, now you take this basis element E i j, then you can easily see that this is exactly. So, maybe I should put So, let us work it out. So, if we take E i j times E j j, so that is going to be E i j and then minus E j j E i j will be 0. Yeah, so this is going to be just to this uh, distance. So, this is exactly E i j E j j minus E j j E i j which is exactly E i j. So, recall that E i j E k l is going to be delta j k E i l. So, this is the product formula. Okay. So, in particularly E i j can be written as the commutator of two elements. So, that is all we want. So, now if you take the other type which is h i which is nothing but E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1 then it is easy to see that this is going to be the bracket E i i plus 1 and then E i plus 1 E, e i plus 1 i. So, this is going to be E i i plus 1 times E i plus 1 i minus E i plus 1 i my times E i i i plus 1. So, which is exactly equal to E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. So, that means this is both the S elements are inside the derivative algebra. Okay, that proves that all the basis elements of S L n lies inside the derivative algebra. So, that means we have that this S L n sits inside J L n. So, we have that uh, the derivative algebra of G L n is equal to S L n. So, now uh, let us actually try to understand all the ideals of uh, G L n. So, now if we take some ideal of G L n, then we want to claim that that must be one of the four ideals. Okay. So, let us call it a theorem because it is a very important result. So, the ideals of G L n are the 0 identity S L n or G L n. So, these are all the only ideals. So, now you can see that this is nothing but the center and this is nothing but the derivative algebra and we do not have anything more. 
ok. So, let us start with i being ideal inside GLN. So, we have to consider some cases to prove this ok. So, let us assume that it is a non-zero ideal. If it is 0 then there is nothing to prove ok. So, basically what we want to prove that since SLN has co-dimension 1 and the center C times identity that has uh, dimension 1. So, if you prove that either I is contained inside the C times identity or I actually contains SLN then we are done ok. So, we claim that either I is contained in C times identity or I must contain SLN ok. So, how are we going to proceed? We actually further assume I is indeed contained in the what is called a set of all diagonal matrices. So, let us denote do n by the set of all diagonal matrices of GLN ok. So, now consider the case, the case 1 let us say that I is contained in do n suppose ok. So, in this case we claim ok. So, in this case we claim that this i must be contained in c times identity. So, there is no other option ok. So, now uh, how one can actually uh, proceed. So, suppose i is actually not contained in this uh, uh, c times identity ok. If i is not contained in the span of identity. So, then there exists some element x which will look like summation a k k e k k where k range from 1 to n inside i. But this will not have all the entries a k k will not be same. So, that means, so there exists this element with the with the pair i not equal to j such that this a i i must be not equal to a j j. So, with the coefficients a i a j j distinct we can have inside x. So, now it is easy to do the following computation if you take the bracket x e j j then you can easily see that this will be exactly a i i minus a j j times e i j and this is has to be inside i because i being ideal. Now, a i is different from a j j that means this coefficient is non-zero. So, this coefficient is non-zero. So, that would imply that e i j must be element inside i. So, there is no other option. So, now i to begin with we assume that is subspace of the set of all diagonal matrices, but we have produced one element e i j where i is not equal to j inside i and this is a contradiction to the our assumption ok. This is actually a contradiction to our assumption that i is contained in no. So, that proves i must be, so this proves i must be contained in C times identity. So, what we have proved so far if we assume i is contained in do n then that implies i is contained in C times identity ok. So, that means if i is not contained in C times identity then it implies i cannot be contained in do n ok. So, here is the case 2. Let us assume i is not contained in C times identity. So, if i is contained in C times identity then we are done. So, let us say i is not contained in the one dimensional space span by identity ok. So, then that would imply that i is not contained in do n. So, that means there exists x which is denoted by let us say some a k l e k l where k l varies over 1 to n. So, which is inside i and 
what are what the condition that we have for this AKL at least for some pair i not equal to j ok. So, there exists a pair i not equal to j such that this a i j is non zero for some i not equal to j ok. Let us actually play with this uh, a i j and then get what we want. So, now we are going to compute e i i x. So, it is easy to compute using the formula then you can easily see that this is going to be exactly equal to summation over L A I L E I L minus summation A K I E K I where the second sum runs over K. Now, if you do one more computation that the bracket E I I X comma the bracket E J J. So, then you get exactly A I J E I J plus a j i e j i. Now, if we do again uh, one more hit with add of e i, so which will give you that let us call this uh, some element y, then the bracket e i i y will be exactly equal to a i j e i j minus a j i e j i. So, now all these elements must be there inside i ok, all this must be there inside i. So, now that implies immediately that, so you can actually just uh, add them and because a i j being non-zero, so that implies immediately e i j inside i. So, now for this pair i j, i not equal to j, we have that this e i j inside i. Okay. So, we have a pair i j where i not equal to j and e i j is in i. Now, using this it is immediate that one can prove that e i k must be there inside i. So, because e i k is nothing but e i j comma e j k and this is there inside i for all k you can take it to be not equal to h. So, now using this you can immediately see that E i l must be inside i for all l which is not equal to i ok. So, slowly we, what we are going to do we are going to actually say that all this E i j i not equal to j must lie inside i. So, now uh, i is not contained in the c times identity. So, i must be containing SLN that is what we are trying to prove. So, we want to prove that the basis element must lie inside i the basis element of SLN. So, now we have proved so far that E i j is there for some tuple i j using that we proved E i l is there for all l equal to i. So, now let us look at E k l. So, this is going to be e k i and e i l and this is going to be inside i for all k comma l such that you can choose k is not equal to l and l is not equal to i. So, as long as you choose l not equal to i this element is going to be inside i and if you hit it with any e k i it is going to be there inside i. So, that is why you get E k l for all k natural k. So, now it is not hard to see that uh, again this minus 2 k i is there. So, now what we have? We have E k l is inside i for all k not equal to l and l is not equal to i. That means, E k l is there for all l not equal to i. Okay? So, now we need to still show E k i is there for k not equal to i, but this is nothing but ok minus 2 of E k i is just the bracket you have to take the double bracket E i k E k i with E k i and this is in i and this is true for all k not equal to i. So, now using these two you can you can easily see 
you can easily see that E k L is in I for all k not equal to L. So, one set of basis elements of SLN lies inside your I. Now, the other set which is H k which is nothing but E k k minus E k plus 1 k plus 1 and it is easy to see that this is also again there by doing this simple computation E k k plus 1 and E k plus 1 k the bracket of these two will be exactly H k and this is there inside your I again. So, this means all the basis elements of SLN are there. So, that implies SLN is contained in I. So, now we assume that I is not contained in the one dimensional space spanned by the identity and that implies that I is contained inside SLN that is what we proved. Since SLN has co-dimension 1, so I must be either SLN or GLN. So, that is what uh, it implies. So, this implies I is either SLN or GLN and this completes the proof of uh, this theorem. So, that actually asserts that all the ideals of uh, GLN are nothing but either 0 or the center or the derivative algebra or GLN itself. So, now using this one can immediately conclude that uh, the structure of SLN and uh, of course, GLN. Okay. So, GLN as a Lie algebra is isomorphic to SLN direct sum the one dimensional center. So, these kind of Lie algebras will be called what is called reductive Lie algebras. So, we will actually uh, define and give some characterization of reductive Lie algebras later, but anyway that is not important for this course. So, let us leave it. So, now as a corollary we have the following result. So, SLN must be simple, it is a simple Lie algebra. Again it is just one, one line proof, let us start with I being ideal inside SLN. So, let us start with the non-zero ideal. Okay. So, now I commutes with this I n okay, because I n being identity matrix. So, I must commute with this one dimensional space and this implies that I must be ideal inside GLN as well. Okay. So, I is ideal inside GLN because GLN is nothing but SLN direct sum the one dimensional space CN. Now, we know all the ideals of GLN since I is non-zero ideal of GLN and I is contained in SLN that force that I must be SLN, there is no other option. Okay. So, this proves that the only ideals of SLN are 0 on itself that proves that SLN must be a simple Lie algebra. Okay. This actually tells everything about the structure of uh, GLN and SLN and with this actually uh, we will develop the representation theory of GLN and SLN from next class onwards. I will stop here. Thank you.